amen, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise one more time. So good to see you here in worship today. Listen, why don't you just bow your heads for a quick moment and talk to God right now and thank God that you made it here on Sunday morning. Thank God that you're watching here on Sunday morning. Thank God for protecting you all through this week. This is a great time when we can just focus on, again, the goodness of God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Somebody said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. In the house of the Lord. That's where you can receive answers to your prayers. In the house of the Lord. That's where you can get that sense of ease and knowing that God is still there in the midst of your situation. I want to tell you, there's got to be somebody in this place that's thankful for God's grace and God's mercy even on today. Are you thankful for his grace and his mercy? So that's why we're here today. So prepare yourselves for worship today. Tell God who he is. Let him know how good he's been in your life today. Our God is a prayer answering God. Our God is a healing Father. Our God is a delivering Father. And so when we send praises up, it's because we know how good God is. If you're alive today, you ought to be shouting unto God today. If it had not been for God that was by your side, you don't know where you'd be today. So let's just talk to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you up. We magnify you today. Father, we've got a reason to praise and worship your name today. Father, we just ask that you would inhabit this place, God. Inhabit our mind, our bodies, and our souls today, God. I ask if there's anybody here today that has a challenge today, clear it up right now. Help them to know that you, you may not come when we want you to, but you're right on time today. We pray if there's somebody here dealing with loss, help them to know that you can find their mind, their body, and their soul, and you can turn it around in an instant, Father. We pray right now and if somebody needs a healing that you can give a healing right now we believe in your healing powers and so that's why we're going to send the praises up because we believe that when the praises go up that your blessings are going to come down so we ask father now to shower down shower down your blessings God shower down in this place your grace shower down right now your mercy and father we thank you we give you all the honor we give you all the glory, and we don't care how early it is in the morning. We're going to shout unto God with a voice of triumph and praise your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise, and let's worship him today, King of Kings. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, say King of Kings. King of Kings, you are. Lord of Lords, you are.
My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Though nobody else deserves it, God, but you. My hallelujah belongs to you. <laughs> you deserve it. You deserve it. Yeah. 
and lift your hands up still talking to God tell him oh, oh, oh in the yester years when we couldn't articulate our pains and our sufferings and our problems we would just say oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. that's what we would say we would just hum it about mama used to go around the house trying to deal with the problems of the world and problems of her family she would just just start to hum it when she started to cooking the food and washing the laundry she would just start to start to humming something we don't know what she was humming but maybe it was this particular part of it sometimes when you're going through the trials and tribulations the hardships of life sometimes all you have to do is just hum a tune and suddenly your spirit becomes settled in whatever you're going through talk to God right now tell him about the world situation tell him about what you need from him ask and it shall be given talk to him about the church today ask him to infill your spirit with the power of his spirit and I declare to you you will walk in a consecration and anointing that you never understood even now amen God we come right now in the name of Jesus we love you we thank you we adore you God it is in you we live, move, and have our very being and existence. Had it not been for you on our side, we would have found ourselves contracted by the disease. We would have found ourselves in a hospital hooked up with all kinds of medications and all kinds of things and items. And God, we know that if it had not been for you, we would not have been able to sleep last night and to wake up early this morning, yet in our right mind. And for this, we're grateful. God, we're thankful that you preserved our family, that you preserved our health, that you preserved our strength, that you preserved relationships around us. And even now, God, we're believing as we stay here to worship you, we're going to praise you, we're going to lift our hands, we're going to magnify you, we're going to thank you because you have been better to us than we've been to our own self. God, we say thank you, thank you, hallelujah, praise you from upon high in Jesus name we pray and all the people of God said amen give God another great big hand praise just turn to your neighbor and give them the the hug to your neighbor just hug yourself and turn to your neighbor and say neighbor this is for you this is for you you and you you may go, go to your seat we're so grateful to God to have you today this is the day that the Lord hath made we're going to rejoice and be glad in it the psalmist said I was so glad when they said unto me out of all the houses in the community, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Somebody give God a great big hand praise for his presence today. We're going to ask that our text will come and give us our uh, infomercials that we prepare ourselves to give to God, not only ourselves, but to give to God at least the 10% that he requires of each of us so that he can take the 90% and stretch it so much further has anybody ever experienced god stretching your 90 percent that water tank that's supposed to last 10 years is lasting 20 years that furnace that should have went out at least three four years ago praise god it ain't going out today and ain't gonna go out tomorrow amen and so god knows how to stretch the 90 percent but he says that if you deny me the 10 percent i'll show you what the 90 percent won't do for you anymore so i'm gonna trust god i don't know about you if i can trust him through a pandemic i know i can trust him with my finances how about you today say amen and i want to thank everybody who is giving by way of the electronic giving and those who are watching us online don't just watch us online participate online even by giving uh an offering a tithe just hit that button where it says not only subscribe but also where it says give go to our website uh, and, and make sure that you participate. We got folk that are looking at us from not only Cleveland, but all across the entire world. And we want you to know that we can even be connected here at this church. God bless you as our texts come now.
Mount Zion's partnering with community organizations on holding opportunities for civilian rights training. It's called the Civil Rights Movement II. Under the leadership of Dr. Macon and other community leaders, there will be internship opportunities in areas such as Dr. King's nonviolent strategies and how to affect change in your community. These trainings are for adults ages 18 to 50, and there are just a few open slots available. Call the church to join the movement. We are partnering with the Village of Oakwood for a summer concert with legendary singer and Grammy winner Bobby Wilson, son of famous soul singer Jackie Wilson. Bring your lawn chairs and blankets and relax outside under the stars with the community. The concert is Thursday, August 19th at 7 p.m. at the Hawthorne Valley Shopping Center parking lot across from Sam's Club, just one mile away from the church. Join us there. This year, we are blessing our local and Cleveland schools with supplies. We're collecting backpacks, pencils, folders, rulers, notebooks, and uniform items. Join the drive so we can make sure our kids are prepared for the year. There's a barrel in the foyer for supplies. Please donate by August 22nd. As our kids prepare to go back to school, we want to pray over them. On Sunday, August 22nd, we will hold a special prayer for students. All young people, join us on this special Sunday. Also, school supplies will be available for those who need them. Activities are coming to our prayer garden. We will do things like a farmer's market, have a paint and learn, and poetry showcase, or even a dog day with your furry friends. If you are interested in activities in the prayer garden, connect with us online to be informed of the upcoming activities. Sunday, August 29th, we celebrate our health day with University Hospitals. We want everyone to stay healthy. UH will have a tent available with free medical screens, services, and updated information. Ask questions with doctors, talk to dietitians, and get necessary vaccinations and tests. This is a great opportunity, so invite your family and friends to church as we promote good health and God's best for your body. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would all stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12 as we prepare ourselves for our giving time, for our tithe time. This is the time where we give to God. This is also a great time to just thank God for all that he's given you. Isn't it good to know that God gives us more than we even give him? He'll stretch us in a certain kind of way. He'll give us so much more if we just give a portion back to him. Let us read this text responsively. The Bible says this. It says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say... Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, in a moment of reflection, thinking upon God. Thanking God again for all that we have, knowing that all we have and all will ever be is because of what God has given to us. 
There's many witnesses here today about the tithe and how when you bless God, when you bless God's house, God will bless your house today. I see a man raving his hand today. That's because he's been blessed by God today. Let me pray over you for a quick moment as we give of our tithes and our offerings. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We ask right now that you would bless the giver in a mighty and powerful way. We don't give grudgingly. We give cheerfully, knowing that God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you, God. For all that you've been able to do, thank you for this beautiful church, this wonderful ministry, all of the great people that are involved. It's all because of the faithful people of God coming together to, again, usher in your kingdom here on earth. So we love you, we lift you up, and we magnify you right now in this special time of worship through our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I'm going to ask all of those that are bringing their tithe and offering, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. Also, you can get your communion as you come up also. You can also pick up your communion after giving of your tithe and offering. And also to those online, go to mzov.org and you can give electronically or go to the app on Givelify. Download Givelify and you can give online. Again, we thank you for blessing God through your giving. As we continue to give, God bless you. Thanks. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 oh.
somebody all around the church just wave at somebody give them a wave a praise wave amen amen you may be seated in God's house how many are just again happy to be in the house of the Lord come on do I have any blessed folk to be in the Lord's house for yet another Sunday morning if you have your Bibles you can turn into 2nd Corinthians in the New Testament 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 through 18 2nd Corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 through 18 if you have it say amen if you don't have it say help me Jesus you're worth waiting for 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 16 through 18 and as we go into the word of God let us just pray to God for a quick moment Heavenly Father we love you we thank you we lift you up and we magnify your name. We ask today that you would just breathe something into our spirit. Give us a word from you. You're the one person that we can say one thing, but it can translate into different ways to everybody listening. So I pray that everyone gets what they need today. Bread of heaven, feed us. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. I'd like to read this text from the New International Version. The Bible says this. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. If I can translate this in another, uh, another version, I'd like to read the voice version of the text. It says, so we have no reason to despair. Despite the fact that our outer humanity is falling apart and decaying, our inner humanity is breathing in new life every single day. You see, the short-lived pains of this life are creating for us an eternal glory that does not compare to anything that we know here. So we do not set our sights on things we can see with our eyes. All of that is fleeting. It will eventually fade away. Instead, we focus on the things that we cannot see, which live on and on. Today, I just want to give a quick subject, and I just want to make the statement that trouble won't last always. Trouble, say trouble, won't last always. Isn't it good to know that trouble won't last always? You know, if there's anything that I've learned in my years working as pastor, I, there's, there's things that, that, that don't go the way that we think it should go. I, I, I've seen so many things that have gone in the wrong direction. I've witnessed, I've witnessed more tragic stories than I wish on anybody. And the truth is, I've learned in over 17 years of ministry that life can be tough. That life can be tough. However, the Bible suggests that though life can be tough at times, though we go through some rough uh, uh, things in life, there are lessons in our experiences. You see, even as Christians, God allows us to go through some tough times, but he does that in order to show the world how good God really is. And see, I want to tell you, God is still good in the midst of all that you go through. And I want to tell you, sometimes God will send you through some tests and some trials, but I believe that the tests and trials that you go through will become your future testimony. Has anybody ever been through a situation in their life that later on became a testimony in their life? Somebody ought to say amen to that. Think about it, when a loved one dies or a relationship crumbles or a friend abandons you or, or a prayer is not answered, when, a, when sickness comes about in your body, when you lose your job or, or, or when you lose your home or when you walk down the deep valleys of life, these are just tests for your later testimony. And see, this is what Paul was saying to the church in the text. He was speaking to the Corinthian church and he's showing us that we have some choices in life as to how we're going to respond when disappointments hit our life. 
When, when, when the testing and trying times hit our life, we, we, we can do some things. There's some things that we can do. We can either get cynical and depressed. We can, we can sulk in our challenges. We can, we can let it get us down or we can lose our faith in God. We can have a good memory of the wrong things. We can have a bad memory of the right things. We can compare ourselves to others. We can live in the past while downgrading the present and, and, and forgetting the future or this is what we should do and this is what we can do. We can acknowledge the pain and yet keep the faith that your future is going to be greater than your present and greater than your past. And see, I think that's the better option. Somebody needs to say, yes, I'm disappointed. Yes, I've gone through some rough times in my life, but I'm not going to turn my back on God. I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to let it change my identity. If anybody asks you who I am, somebody needs to tell them you're what? You're a child of God. And see, what you should say is, is I'm still the son or I'm still the daughter of the king of kings and the Lord of lords. See, in spite of it all, what I just want to proclaim today is that God is still good. He's still at the throne and he'll never put more on you than you can bear. See, that's the attitude that you need to have right now in your life when you're feeling disappointed in, in people or when you're feeling disappointed in your circumstances or you even feel a little disappointed in God. You have to seek the cure of disappointment. You've got to defeat it. And one way to do this, one way to do this is, number one, you've got to focus on eternal things. You've got to focus on eternal things. And see, that's what our 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 through 18 text is all about. It's about focus. Say focus. See, even though things look like they are falling apart and you may not see where things are making sense, there still isn't a day that goes by where God is not dispensing his grace in your life. You're living in God's grace even on today. See, for instance, in light of COVID-19, Paul helps us even in this context. He teaches us to not fixate on the fear around us. See, our situation is only temporary. Instead, we should focus on what is eternal. Eternal. We should focus on the world's salvation. We should focus on our faith and on Christ's return. We should focus on what God has called us to do. See, if you're experiencing fear, if you're experiencing anxiety, know that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but he's given you a spirit of power. He's, he's given you a spirit of love. He's given you a spirit of self-discipline. See, we don't need to fear. See, we can pursue faith and we can fix our eyes on what is eternal and what we have in Christ. Now, I know for some of us, it's tough to focus on eternal things, to set our sights on, and, and our faith in the future. But, but the Bible gives us hope and it teaches us. It teaches us a different way of seeing things. See, you've got to look at things in a different kind of way. For example, as a parent, my kids, they often get upset at things that I know in just a few moments won't matter to them anymore. But see, they get so upset about it. They get all bent out of shape. And, but as a parent, I know from experience and also from dealing with them that they will forget about it completely soon and move on. Maybe it's in an hour. Maybe it's in a day. Sometimes it's in a few minutes they get over it. However, from their perspective, from the perspective of, of my children, or, or should I say from a child's perspective, they just can't see what I see because they haven't matured yet. They can't see what me as their father sees because I know more, I, I've been through more, and, and most of the challenges I know how to get through. And, and see, that's just like God in our lives. See, we can get all worked up, uh, worked up about things that, that happen to us when God is like, that's not going to even last as long as you think. He's saying trouble is not going to last as long as you think. This is going to be another thing in the past that, I, that you're going to be able to say, God brought me out of. See, God sees and he knows things that we don't know. And sometimes we got to trust that these troubles are not going to last always. See, that's what being spiritually mature is all about. 
It's about standing on the promises of God. And one of them being is that God will never leave you nor forsake you. I want to ask you, is there somebody here today that's happy to know that God will never leave you nor forsake you? Paul said this, that everything we encounter in this life, our, our mortal life, our temporary life is light and momentary. Light and momentary in the face of eternity is actually a smaller issue than you think. So when your prayers aren't answered right away, you got to realize that you've got some time. You've got to realize you've got some time. And, and Paul in this text is not trying to invalidate the pain that we feel in our moments of tough times. He's not saying that the pain is not going to hurt. But he says that the thing that you need to do to soothe the pain is to always remember and focus on the fact that God is still on the throne. See, that's what you've got to keep in your mind. Uh, this happened, but God. They, they did this to me, but God. This is the news that I got, but God. This is the pain that I'm going through, but God is still on the throne. I don't know about you, but I'm happy to proclaim that God is still on the throne. God has been there. God has done that. He created this and, and he fixed that. So, so what we go through is light and momentary in the whole scheme of things. So our first lesson is to look at things from a, an eternal perspective. Now here's another thing that you got to do when you're faced with some disappointment in your life. Uh, uh, the second thing you got to do is you got to cast your cares upon the Lord. 1 Peter 5, 7, if you're a note taker, cast your cares upon the Lord. The Bible says this, since God cares for you, since God cares for you, let him carry all your burdens and your worries. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. See, when you receive bad news that brings on disappointment, you might feel a mixture of shock. You might feel a mixture of sadness. You might feel a mixture of fear in your life, maybe even anger, maybe even a little bit of bitterness. Whatever you feel, I want to encourage you to cast it upon the Lord. See, what does that mean? It means throw it at him like you're casting a fishing line. See, when you cast a fishing line, you, you don't throw it like you want it close to you. You throw that fishing line from you as far away as possible and, and never forget that the furthest place that you can send your burdens is to the Lord. See, when I'm upset, I don't get on the phone. I get on my knees. I go to God. See, that's where most folk mess up. They, they pick up the wrong line. Now is the time to be on the prayer line. Can I get a witness this morning? Now is the time to be on the prayer line. The Bible says this, cast, turn over your burdens, your prayers to the Lord. And, and he will, not, not he might, I like this, and he will, or, or not he may, the Bible says he will carry it and he will lighten the load. What does a lightened load feel like? What does a lightened load feel like in our life? It means you won't always feel afraid. It means you won't always feel weak at times. It, it, it means you won't always feel disappointed. You won't always feel angry in life or you won't always feel the grief that's going on in your life. It will go away at some point in due time. In time, God himself will restore you and make you strong and make you steadfast and make you firm in his word. So cast your cares upon the Lord. But lastly, I want to encourage you to do one more thing that the scripture instructs when, when we're disappointed, when, when trouble comes our way. Hebrews 13, chapter 15 in the New Testament, excuse me, excuse me, says this, our, we need to offer a sacrifice of praise. Offer, say offer, a sacrifice of praise. The Bible says through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. A sacrifice, by definition, is something that cost you something. And when you're told to continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, it means this. It means that praising God won't always be easy. 
or it won't always be something that, uh, that you immediately want to do. Praising God can cost us a lot. It may cost us our pride. It may cost us our energy. It may, it, it will certainly cost you your time, but I want to tell you, praising God is time well spent. Remember this, there is something, this is something I want you to hang on to. This is a, a note I want you to hang on to. There is something supernatural. There is something supernatural that happens when you are dealing with disappointment, but you still choose to praise God. There's something supernatural that happens when you're going through trouble, but you still got a praise in your mouth. See, for Paul and Silas in the Bible, their praise broke them out of jail. And the truth of the matter is your praise can break you out of your situation. Is there anybody in this place that knows that it was praise that brought you through? It was praise that brought you through 2020. And it's praise that's going to bring you through 2021. Praise changes your focus. It takes the focus off your problems and turns your focus toward God. See, one way to praise is to just start counting your blessings. Now, I know you look good. I know you look great this morning. You, you look all dressed up and you're ready for Sunday morning. But somebody has some more blessings that you just, you just got to thank God for. You got to count your blessings. And, and, and you got to watch when you count your blessing, how your attitude and how your outlook on life will change in an instant. See, what will praise do in your life? Praise will calm you and humble you. Again, as your focus gets away from what your problem is, you'll become more at ease and more calm once you focus on the problem solver. What will praise do? Praise will invite the Lord's presence into your situation. The Bible says in Psalms 22 verse 3, it says that God inhabits the praise of his people. See, you want God to show up in your life. You want God to get up in your situation. Then you got to realize that he dwells, he shows up. He starts to move in an atmosphere where God is being praised. See, your praise will pave the way for your future. It's through your praise where he will give you direction. It's, it's through your praise where he'll give you guidance and future appointments that he has for your life. See, when you praise, his voice comes through clear. When you praise, it makes the enemy flee. See, when you praise, there's no room left for negativity. When you, when you praise, there's no more room for complaining. See, when you praise, that's when God starts to bring the blessings into your life. See, when you praise, that's when he'll open the door to some miracles. Is there anybody in this place that needs a miracle in your life? When you praise, that's when the victory comes in your direction. When you praise, that's when he'll satisfy your soul. When, when you praise, that's when he'll release the depression. Praise invites the spirit of the Lord into your life. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? There is liberty. And see, that's what we need right now. See, the liberty in knowing that no matter what comes your way, you can handle it. By focusing on eternal things, by casting your cares upon the Lord, and by giving God a sacrifice of praise. See, now is the time to get your eyes off the problems and focus on the problem solver. So I want to ask you the question, can somebody just stand on your feet and take a moment to look up toward the hills from whence cometh your help and watch how God can hold it together? Can somebody just take a moment and look up to God and watch how God can suddenly ease your pain. Can somebody take a moment and just watch how suddenly when you look up toward God, he'll show you that blessings can shower down. Can somebody just take a moment and realize that you're still standing and give God some praise? Can somebody take a moment and look up and realize that God is still healing? Can somebody... Take a moment and look up 
and realize that God is still delivering you. Get somebody. Look up and realize and look toward the hills from whence cometh your help. And thank God that your help comes from the Lord. Give him some praise right now. Oh, yes. Will you bow your heads for a quick moment? He'll be shelter for your storm. He'll be refuge in challenging times. He'll be strength when you're weak. And most importantly, as the Bible says, he'll lighten your load. That's the message. When you're dealing with disappointment, it simply means it's time to get with God so that he can lighten your load. I pray today, if somebody has a heavy load today, as we bow our heads, as we talk to God today, will you talk to the healer right now? It's time to turn it over to the Lord. Somebody here, you've got a lot on your mind. Will you cast your cares upon him? so that he can lighten your load. Somebody here is so focused on their health, so focused on their situation, so focused on their problems that they can't see a future for themselves. So I ask you today, will you set your mind on things eternal? Somebody here may have forgotten that God has brought you from a mighty long way. Will you look back over your life and will you say, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me thus far? I guarantee it will start you to start yes. to praising him even on today. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We lift you up. We love you. We pray today, if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you, that they will accept you into their life. And no one believe that if they have Jesus in their life, they don't have to live in disappointment. If they have Jesus in their life, that trouble doesn't last always. He'll deliver and bless them today. We give you all the praise. Yes. We give you all the honor. And we give you all the glory today. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. There is and now amen. no condemnation. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise one more time. As we remain amen. standing, give Pastor Larry a great big hand for letting God use him. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ. As you bow your heads in the word of thanks unto God, even now, trouble don't last always. And the reason why trouble don't last always is because God sent the best that he had for you and to you in the form of Jesus Christ who goes to the place called Calvary and he gives to us the highest praise if you will the sacrifice of his own body and he is crucified on the cross so now we thank God for becoming the highest sacrifice no one can beat him in sacrificing themselves like Christ did this was God who came to us in the flesh and he came for flesh. And so no weapon now will formed against you will ever prosper because the spirit of God is with you right now. He walks with you, he talks with you, he consoles you, he directs you, he helps you. So thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank God for God. Thank God for Jesus Christ who is God manifest in the form of Jesus, thank God for the power of the Holy Spirit that guides us, controls us, leads us, and lifts us out of valleys, even shadows of death. Oh God, we come right now, we thank you for the marvelous gift that you gave to us. You decided that nothing was good too much to give, and that you gave to us the only one who has come from you, who is you, Jesus, who is the Christ. Thank you, God, for his sacrifice for us on the hill called Skull, where he is stripped of his clothing, crowned with a crown, and suffers the worst death anyone could ever suffer for the sake of the sins of the world. But thank you, God, that he cries from the cross, it is finished. So the debt is now paid and we're free to move on with you and in your glory. The Bible says on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the common loaf of bread. He blessed it, he gave it to them and said, as often as ye do this, as often as you eat this, he said, do it in the remembrance of the sacrifice that I paid on Calvary for the debt of sin. And he said, do this until I, Jesus, 
the Christ comes back again. And I need to tell you that he's closer to coming back today than he was 2,000 years ago. You say, well, when is he coming? The Bible says, when you think not, the Son of Man appeareth. And most of us think he's not coming back today. We don't think that he's coming back this week. We don't think that he's coming back this month. We don't really think he's coming back this year. The Bible says, that's the time to be awake and aware. When you think not, the Son of Man comes back. Let us eat together. There on the table, he took the fruit of the vine that represented his sinless, stainless blood. They began to give it to each of his disciples, and he said to them, as often as you do this, in remembrance of me, he says, drink, but not only drink, but he says, drink ye all of it because all of my blood, every drop of it, is significant. Let us drink together. And all the people said, Amen. You may go to your seat for just a moment here. We're just so grateful to God to see you here today. And as most of you know, this is voting time. Say voting time. And everybody should vote. Say everybody should vote. The reason why you should vote is not only because people have sacrificed for you, and for me, it is a right, a constitutional right, and it ought to be a right to make it as easy and accessible as possibly can be because all of us need to vote. You need to know that the people who sacrificed for you were not just the people in the civil rights period. The Martin Luther Kings, Ralph Abernathy's, and other kinds of folk. But rather, it was people who tried to vote at the last election. People who had to wait in long lines, they sacrificed. I said to someone today, I said, those people who waited in those long lines, some of them were ill. Some of them had contracted the coronavirus disease in November. Some of them went home and dropped dead had they not just gone out and just utilized the last bit of energy that they had to stand in long lines, sometimes without water, sometimes without appreciation, sometimes with people around them who were angry that they showed up, sometimes through frustration that they couldn't get there quicker. They just dropped dead because they had no more energy left, but they took their last energy and breath to vote, to say that the vote is important. And I want you to contact five, 10 people this today. Today, don't wait till tomorrow because some people have to cast their, uh, their, their, their mail-in ballots by tomorrow, a day before the election. So if they think they're gonna cast their mail-in ballot on Tuesday, it will be invalidated in the state of Ohio. Am I right about it? Yes, yeah, somebody don't even know. So I want you to vote. Now, we got, a, we got somebody in our church who's running for some, something. Now, I need to tell you, we don't endorse candidates. But we can support candidates. Amen? We can pray for candidates. Amen? And one of our candidates is Phil. Phil, what's your last name? Stand up there. I wanted you to yell it out, uh, Phil, because I want them to hear it. What's your name? What's your game? He's running for council at large for Bedford Heights, Ohio. And Phil wants you to be mindful of his election. He wants all the Bedford Heights people to uh, go out and vote for him. I didn't endorse anybody, did I? I, I can't endorse nobody, so I, I'm going to be very careful because I'm not going to jail. We're not going to close down the church and lose the church. Amen. But we also have another candidate here as you remain standing, Phil. We have Chantel Brown. And Chantel is running for the Congress of the United States of America. And she says to me, she said, Reverend, I am running off my record. And I said to her, you need to run off my relationship with you and your record. And she said, I'm running off the relationship with you and your record. Chantel, why don't you come down here and, and stand in the center here. 
We also have, Larry, give me that other uh, mic. We also have here, oh, she looking so good today. I asked her, what is she doing? I said, candidates ain't supposed to look that good after running all year. They supposed to look worn down and worn out. We also have here one of the most important congressmen in the United States of America. He happens to be on the committee to investigate the January 6th uprisings. He's also the chairman of the Homeland Security in this nation, and he is a seasoned congressman from where I'm from. He's from the South. He's from Mississippi. I'm from Southern Ohio. That's the South. If anybody know anything about Cincinnati, you right across, he's cross street from the Mississippi River. I'm cross street from the Ohio River. And so we have much in common. He's a very kind man. I'm gonna ask that you come up, uh, 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 Congressman. Amen. Come on up to the stage. Now you sit, stand here because everybody wants to see who you are. Well, he looks like my family member. He is the Congressman of the United States of America. He is sitting on the committee. Whatever side you own, you need to be on God's side. And you ought to be on God's side. So I want you to stand and give God a great big hand praise for this United States Congressman who is trying to figure out what went on on January 6th. And he says, you have to believe what your eyes see what your heart is declaring. Sister Macon, would you come over here with uh, Pastor Larry? Amen. And somebody got a camera. I want you to take a camera here, a picture here. Uh, you don't have to get the congressman and the congresswoman. You can get me. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. If you want to take a picture, you can take a picture. Use your camera. I keep asking you to bring your cell phone. When you bring your cell phone, you can call somebody up and you can take some pictures in the church and tell them what a wonderful service that we had. Amen. Amen. All right, take that picture and then y'all send it to me. Bishop, would you come up to the uh, side here? Bishop, amen. This is our bishop. Come up here on stage here. This is Bishop Marable. He is the bishop of about now 60 churches in the Painesville, Ashtabula area. And I've got about 125 maybe on a good day, so you're trying to be out beat the uh, presiding bishop. That's pretty good. My other bishop um, um, uh, has at least about 25 Hispanic pastors on the west side, so we're really moving. Uh, Congressman, is there something you want to say here today? I, I usually don't let politicians speak, but you're not a politician. You are a man of God. He's in the United Church. Thank you very much. Uh, good United morning, uh, Pastor. Making. I've thoroughly enjoyed the service so far. My name is Benny Thompson, and by now my accent gives me away. I am from Mississippi. I'm a southerner. But I'm here in support of Chantel Brown, candidate for Congress. What we need in Congress is people who, who get it, people who want to make a difference, people who understand that you have to work with each other. And that's why I gave up my weekend to come to this area on behalf of Chantel. Chantel went through a program that the Congressional Black Caucus put together to train young leaders. And she, she, she is absolutely uh, the best of the best that we had in the program. So I'm tickled to death uh, to introduce to you uh, the A student of the Congressional Black Caucus Institute, Chantel Brown. Amen. Amen. We don't let the uh, candidate speak. We just speak for the candidate because she's got all of our prayers. Now, uh, Chantel, you want us to pray for you, daughter? Well, we're going to pray for you. Congressman, do you have a hard job? Do you have a hard job? Uh, let me ask you a question. Is it hard being on the committee to figure out what's going on? what went on in January 6th. You're, you, are you the chairman? Or, I'm the chairman. You're the chairman of that committee. I'm right, sorry, right. Uh, Congressman uh, Thompson. Is that rough today? Do you, have, do you ever get any threats or anything like that? On a 
daily basis. On a daily basis. So Absolutely. they threaten your life just because you're sitting on a committee? And just because I'm doing my job. Just because you're doing your job every day. And in Mississippi, we remember, we, we remember a person named uh, uh, Megan Evers. Absolutely. Who also was out there trying to do his job. Yes. And uh, we're praying for your your health and we're praying for your peace and we're praying that no one ever invades your life. Yes. Do you have a family? Yes, I do. Have a wife? 53 years. 53 years? Well, you don't look a day over 40. You must have married her before you got married. Married. Burn one. That's what a good wife will do for you. Thank you, Marilyn. And uh, let me ask you this. Do you have any children? One girl. She's 40. And do you have any grandchildren? two grandchildren. Oh my goodness. So this is a man who has a family. Absolutely. And so when you impact him, you impact also his family and his congressional race. Now, do you think that she could make it uh, as a congresswoman? Oh, there's no question about it. We welcome her into the fold. Will she be as good as you? As they say in the country, might near. <laughs> Amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer for this man who is also chairman of the Homeland Security for the United States of America uh, Congress. Let's pray for his family. Let's pray for Chantel. Some awful things she is having to deal with as all candidates deal with. But we believe God is able to do abundantly above all that we ask or think. And Pastor Larry already ministered to her and told her that trouble is only temporary but that there is going to be a peace that will pass all understanding. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you today for this beautiful daughter of yours that you have placed into her heart to become the Congresswoman of the United States of America. We pray, God, that you will consecrate her, anoint her, that she might walk in the orderly steps of her life that you have already ordered the steps of her life for. We thank you for this surrogate who is here today to say on the behalf of so many others that this is the candidate that is his preference and their preference. And even now, God, we ask that you will bless him, God. Protect him in this most dangerous times that we live in. Remind him that no weapon formed against him, though they may be formed, at the end of the day, they will never prevail and they will never conquer because he is a conqueror because of the Christ who have conquered his life and who have conquered his salvation and now he can walk in the conquering spirit of the Holy Spirit. Thank you God for his visiting the Mount Zion Church. Bless him, bless his family. Be with also the marvelous staff that he has with him today. And also we pray for our own member, uh, Phil Stevens, who is running for the uh, council position we believe that uh, he believes that it is already done and that all he will do is celebrate the greatness and goodness of who you are in his life. We need people, not only on the national level, but also on the state level, the city level, and even the village and the smaller cities as well. Bless him, bless his family. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Amen. We're going, they're going to have to run. They got to get to another church right now. Now, just so you know, whatever church you're going to, it, it won't be as good as ours. Uh, it, it would be nice, uh, but you will not get what you got here today. So don't expect it nowhere else in the state of Ohio and the nation like the Mount Zion of Oakwood Village. Give ourselves a great big hand. Turn to your neighbor. Give them a hug and tell them, ha, ha, ha. And consider yourself dismissed. Amen. We're going to take them right out this way with us because they have to get to another place. Amen. Y'all should have snapped a picture with this brother and this sister. But just don't get close to them. Chantel Brown. Congress. It's